servers. We needed to configure a dispatcher servlet. We needed to configure a data source. We needed to configure entity manager factory, transaction manager, and a wide variety of stuff. Spring Boot came in and said, why don't we really think differently about this? Can we really bring a lot of intelligence into it? If a Hibernate jar is on the class path, I know somebody is going to use an entity manager. Somebody is needing a data source. Why don't I really go ahead and auto configure it? If somebody is putting a Spring MVC jar on the class path, can I directly go and configure a dispatcher sublet? So what Spring Boot does, it looks at what are the frameworks available on the class path and it looks at what is the existing configuration for the application. And based on this, Spring Boot would provide the basic default configuration to have all the configured frameworks working together. And this is what is called auto configuration. If you create a simple REST project by going to start.spring.io and choosing the dependencies web actuator and dev tools, you can import the project zip into Eclipse as a Maven project and you would see Spring Boot auto configuration in action. All that you need to do is Take this student services application.java, run it as a Java application, and you would see a lot of things happen in the log. All this is because of Spring Boot auto configuration. You can see that dispatcher servlet is automatically configured. There is an error page available. Web jars are automatically configured. All that happens just because of Spring Boot auto configuration. Where is the Spring Boot auto configuration code implemented? All the Spring Boot auto configuration code is present in a jar called Spring Boot auto configure dot jar so you can look at the jar the one which we are looking at is a little older release of spring boot auto configure jar and you can see what are all the stuff which is present so there are a wide range of classes which are present in here you can see some of the important auto configuration things highlighted in here aop message source auto configuration data source auto configuration these classes have the logic of when auto configuration is enabled you can see error MVC auto configuration, embedded server configuration. If you look at any of these classes, for example, the data source auto configuration, this is enabled when there is a data source dot class and a embedded data type dot class on the class path. The other important thing is also add conditional on missing bean. So it's enabled when these classes are present, but there is no bean of this specific type inside the configuration. Now, auto configuration is a lot of logic, a lot of magic also. So, how do you debug it? One of the easiest way to debug auto configuration is by setting debug level. And then you would have a auto configuration report. You'd have positive matches and negative matches. You'd be able to look at it and see why something is not on auto configured, why something is auto configured, and things like that. The other way is to enable Spring Boot actuator on the project. So, add the dependency for Spring Boot auto configuration, sorry, the Spring Boot starter actuator, and you'd be able to see all the negative matches and the positive matches on the actuator directly. In this video, we tried to quickly cover the concept of Spring Boot auto configuration. The attempt was to give you a quick overview so that you'd be able to pursue any of our courses and get better at Spring Boot auto configuration. Good luck, and I'll see you in another video in 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.